Today is 30th, July 2022. We have a few days towards voting or voting day. Today, I want to address something that came up. And I'm not addressing as a pastor or as an evangelist. I'm addressing as, a, as an apostle. Mm. And that's what the Bible says. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, then prophets. In the church, in the church, the work of apostles bring order and direction. This, um, this is uh, a, a message that was, uh, was, was done by, or a statement that was said by the former prime minister, who has become president, which has brought a lot of confusion in the church and among Christians. There's too much debate here and there. People are saying any manner of things. Because right now we're in a political mode. We are people from Azimio and people from Kenya Kwanza and uh, other, at Angano Party and also Roots Party. But this, to me, is something very serious that need be looked into with all the seriousness that it requires. And I'm, I'm addressing this not as an evangelist, not as a pastor, but as an apostle. 30 years I worked with Jesus. So I know deep things and a lot of stuff that God has revealed to me. In this clip, when the Prime Minister was uh, at the KCC during the women conference, there's a mere women conference, the, the Muslim women, something came up, which is a thing of concern. To some, it's not a thing to, of concern, but to us apostles, it's something of concern. And your clip, if you can listen to that clip, there are three things that came up very strong in that clip, which I want to address today. Three things which I want to point out. Number one, you talked about the gospel was brought by a white man and uh, it was made so superior than other religions and that ideology or narrative, you're going to silence it. You say that. That's clip. That's, that's in that clip you said. Number two, in that clip, you talked about the calicots. In that clip, you said about the card clothes. In the same clip, you talked about the church does not need state protection. So, three things are coming up very strong in that tape, which I want to address today, here, as an apostle, in the name of Jesus. Play that clip. Dini ya Kristo ilipelekwa juu zaidi kushinda zingine. Na hiyo kasumba bali mebaki mpaka siku leo. Tutaimaliza. I saw my competitor talking and saying I will uh, I will protect uh, the church. The church does not need to be protected by a president. Kwanza unajua sisi tulipokuwa tunapigania makatiba mpya. Kuna wengine walikuwa napinga katiba hiyo. Ati kwa sababu inahalalisha uh, kathi skot. Mahakama ya kathi. Mungine walipinga that because having a kathi skot in the constitution is discriminating against Christians. But you say that kathi skot has always been in the constitution. It has never harmed any Christians. Our constitution was actually based in, on Christian law. So you don't necessarily have to come up with a Christian court. Because it's already in, in, in building the constitution. And the Catholic court is only dealing with the issues of Islam, marriage, inheritance, uh, and, uh, um, the, uh, and, uh, and um, succession. Which has nothing to do with Christianity. And this became a very uh, major, major issue during the, the debate on the Constitution. We say that our Muslims have a right to have the Kadhis court, and that's why it is in the current Constitution today. Takmir! Takmir! 
Someone here say, oh, it's, it's our to know. You can hear that clip. You are saying very well. The gospel that we preach, the gospel of the kingdom, by which man must be saved when he repent their sins, it came by the white man. The other day, we saw Musili anointing him and calling him an apostle. That's not how apostles talk. Apostles don't talk like that. Apostles are people who are ready to die because of Jesus Christ. Because of the gods of the kingdom. All apostles of Christ, they suffered. They suffered. Peter was crucified upside down. You know about Matthew? Was killed. Thomas was showered with arrows. People have paid the price for this gospel. And we can't play around this gospel. Yes, it has caught us life. This gospel... Cursed Jesus himself. Eh? This gospel. Cursed Jesus himself. The Father sent him on earth to come and bring this gospel to, to humanity. The same Jesus, we punished him. We killed him on the cross. We persecuted him. We beat him. Eh? We tortured him because of this gospel that we birthed. When the gospel was birthed, then Christ raised his apostles. He sent them to the whole world. Say, go preach this gospel to the nations of the world. He told them that. The mandate. And as missions kept on preaching the gospel, some encountered death, like Paul the apostle. Because of this gospel, he was beheaded. John the Baptist, because of this gospel, he was beheaded. Men of God has been beheaded all over the nations of the world. Persecuted because of the gospel. When it came to Africa, it was brought by missionaries. Some of the missionaries who came to Africa, they died because of malaria. Some hungered to bring this gospel to us. And then you dare stand in a conference, you say, this gospel of the white man, white man, you could have said yellow man, white man. It's a pity. And bishops, pastors, you are there protecting these kind of statements, which has no God in them. We must differentiate between holy things and unholy things. Yes, we have to differentiate between holy things and unholy things. We can't joke around the gospel. You think heaven is happy with the, king, the Christians of today, the church of today, the bishops of today? Eh? We have to remove politics from the gospel and let the gospel be the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God and the salvation to any human. You are anointed as an apostle by Apostle Musili. You could have stood in that conference of those Muslims and tell them, to repent their sins and turn to Jesus Christ. Because after this life, all of us are going to stand before Jesus one day to say our sins, to say how we lived on this earth. Oh, yes. So you cannot stand and say the same thing. This is what Muslims say. They say the gospel, the Bible, was not brought by Jesus. It was brought by the white man. The same thing the Sapphirians say, that the Bible was not brought by Jesus was brought by the white man. Eh? I remember Sarah, that uh, Madame Miss Obama in the U.S. There's a, there's a clip that says something. This is a clip. The presidency doesn't change who you are. It reveals who you are. <laughs> and the same thing is true of a presidential campaign. So if a candidate is erratic and threatening, if a candidate traffics in prejudice, fears, and lies on the trail, if a candidate has no clear plans to implement their goals, if they disrespect their fellow citizens, including folks who made extraordinary sacrifices for our country, let me tell you, that is who they are. In that clip she's saying, lead us Take serious what they say. Don't think these people are joking. They mean what they say. It's deep in their hearts. It's deep in their hearts. Eh? It's deep in their hearts. So, we know very well. This statement you said, they are misleading to the people of God. There are many Christians today who look to you. You go to churches. You say you are a Christian. You are, I don't know, an Anglican. But now you can stand and say, this gospel that was brought. Yeah? It's a white man gospel that need be silenced. 
This one is a pity, even to the church. It's a pity to bishops who can stand and support this kind of sentiments. It's a pity. Eh? A pity, I tell you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Eh? So, the Bible says very well, Hamak 2, verse 4, says, says like this. Eh? He whose soul is not upright in himself shall fail. Read carefully. Read carefully. Read carefully. He whose soul is not upright in himself shall fail. Your words will betray you wherever you go. I tell you. will betray you. Eh? If your spirit is crooked, if your soul is crooked, I tell you, it will fail you wherever you go. You say words that will come to haunt you. Oh, yes. Because words are a reflection of your heart. Eh? Words are you. For example, like me, a man of God. When I say devil, go. The devil must go because that's my word. And the devil knows I have authority on that line. Eh? When I say blind I see, the blind I can see because that's what is on my heart and that's my word. When I say disease, go. Leave that body. The disease may live and go. Eh? When I say witch, depart and leave my atmosphere. The witch must depart and leave because I carry out authority in that dominion. So we don't play around with words. We don't play around with the words. In the street world, we don't play around with the words. We don't. Eh? That's why Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, By your words, you shall be justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. Because your words reflect your spiritual condition. Your words represent your spiritual condition. What do you say? When you come to my environment, you say a statement, I will know who you are and where you are. Oh, yes. I've been to meetings, I've been to places, you, you find, um, you're sitting with some sisters, you're talking, a brother comes, one word from the brother, you can tell the brother, he's struggling with the speech of lust. One word from his mouth, you just know, that brother is struggling with the lust. Are you, see, are you seeing that? Hmm? That's what Jesus said. Our yes should be yes, and our no should be no. See Matthew 5, 557. But let the word yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. So, when you say, you must mean what you say. When you say it, eh, that this gospel that Christ birthed, he sent missions around the world to go and preach it. It's a white man gospel. It's no longer what Christ came to do. It's a gospel of a white man. You're going to silence it. You're going to silence what man brought, but you can't silence what Christ birthed. You can't. Eh? This is a, a rock. You, when you fall on it, it will crash into pieces. You cannot. You cannot. The threats against the church are not good. They are not bad. They are not good. They are not good. They are not good. Heaven is aware of your sentiment. I'll tell you for free, it's aware. Because some of us, we have reported to God in prayer. In the across the nation, they are praying. Yes, they have reported that matter to God. Somebody is telling, oh God, going to shut our churches. Threaten to shut our ministries. Remember, your own madam said, all these small churches are going to be shut down. So when you say these things and we connect with these kind of sentiments, there's danger somewhere. There's danger somewhere. That's why we don't take lightly these kind of sentiments. I don't take them. Yeah? You know, in the Bible, we have many types of Christians today. Colossians chapter 1 verse 2 says, To the saints, faithful brethren in Christ, which are in Colossae, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are believers in Christ, but not faithful to the plan and agenda of God. Today, we are bishops today eh, who are in Christ, but are not faithful to the agenda of God. They will not stand to support the agenda of heaven. Some will say, I'll crush your churches. The same bishops and pastors are still supporting that kind of person. These are bishops and pastors who are unfaithful into the agenda of God. Eh? Remember, again, the scripture says there was Psalms 12, 1 to 8. Psalms 12, 1 to 8 says there, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. The faithful disappear from among the sons of men. 
They speak only everyone with his neighbor, with certain lips. Today, faithful Christians are diminishing. Faithful to the call of God. Faithful to the plan of God. If you cannot stand to defend the church of Jesus, you say, oh, the church of Jesus doesn't need anybody to defend it. You are a liar. Pastor, you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. The church needs people to stand by it. And that's why we need faithful men. Somebody cannot be standing to bring policies that be able to bring down the church and you say, say, oh, God will intervene. We can stand by that man and God will say intervene. You are liars. 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 Eh? God is in need of faithful brethren. Right now, we have come to a place in the word of Christ. The spirit of the Antichrist is on the rise. And one intent of the spirit is to crush churches. To crush churches. You remember even this city of Nairobi. I think he gathered. What did he say the other day? If there's a clip he said, churches have lost moral authority. That's what the church has become. They have no moral authority anymore. They have become a transmission mechanism. We are stealing school land. You go to city primary, look. Go, to, go look. The headmasters of primary school are using school fields as parking lots and charging for parking. We are stealing health centers. We are stealing sports ground. You know how the Muzungu had designed Nairobi? Every ward in Nairobi had a school sports ground, had a social hall, had a health center, had a, early, a primary, um, an early childhood education uh, school. It had a fire station. It had, every ward had that. Today, if you go there, where I live in Karura Ward, on the left, was a fire station. You see, who... Who gave that audacity to speak to the church? Did you die for Jesus? Did you die for the churches? Christ is the one who died for the church. You have no authority to say about that. Eh? If the church lost moral authority, eh, you don't cleanse it. It's Jesus who cleanses his own church by his blood. Those lands are saying they were taken. Most of those lands were given by President Moi. He gave bishops in this city of Nairobi churches. He gave them land. When you go to those maps, we, didn't, we never knew. Some of those plots were church, were were a place where like, there was supposed to be like a, a school or a hospital or a playground. We never knew, but Moy gave out. So go revive Moy and ask him why he gave us those things for the churches. And you can't come here to begin to say the church lost some moral authority because they took land. The church never took land. We are given. We are given. So you cannot go around eh, saying the church lost some moral authority. No. Eh? So, see, birds of the same feather flock together. The same God that said the other day, his cabinet, half of his cabinet is going to give the Muslims, half of his cabinet is going to give the Muslims. This is not bad. It's okay. That they are sitting is where policies are made. And the other one, their senior one, he's in a conference of women, Muslim, is telling them he's going to squash the, that thing of the gospel, that ideology. Something is wrong. Church, Writings on the wall. Let those who can understand understand what is happening now. Apostles fight for the plan of God. We are not fighting for your political party. That's not our work. What is our history as this nation? What is our history? Eh? Eh? What is our history? What is our history? Listen to that clip again. Listen to that clip from Raila. He said very, very well. The gospel... We preach today, I preach today, eh, was brought by a white man. White man. Lakini bado ikutuko na kasumba amai wacho hapa na wakoloni. Haya yote manake wakati wazungu walikuwa na hako hapa, dini ya kristo ilipelekwa juu zaidi kuchina zingini. Na hiyo kasumba bali mebaki mpaka siku wa leo. Tutaimaliza. White man. White man, I'm gonna challenge that. That's what I'm asking you now, you people. What is our history in this nation? Something to remember about our churches. Most Muslims believe we are pagans. Us, we are pagans. They call us makafiri. Eh? You know, the Muslim extremists, they bombed our churches. You remember? We forgave them. Eh? And this happened, you remember, 
Go on your Google and do research. You Christians, you bishops, forget it very quickly. Go on your, on your, on your YouTube and, and check. Yeah? From 2010 to 2012, Kenya churches were bombed so much. Bombed all over. You remember? And that's when I'm coming to the other thing that Nani, uh, the, the prime, former president said, churches don't need protection of the president. He said that. Eh? The church needs state protection because we have been bombed before. We have our, our history. And this happened. Remember when our churches were bombed, we are bombed during that time when you were Prime Minister. Oh, yes. Last season, 2008, that's when we became the Prime Minister to 2013. And in between 2010, 2012, our churches were bombed right, left, and center. You remember when you pushed the constitution change, when you said we don't own abortion, where the Urupa crusade, you remember 2010, we are bombed. Blood stains and personal property strewn all over. All telltale signs of what transpired here at Uhuru Park just shortly after the rally organized by the No Campaigners. It is suspected that a homemade bomb went off at the grounds shortly after the meeting was over. 67 people are said to be nursing injuries at the Kenyatta National Hospital. Three others are at the Nairobi Hospital. It is not yet clear what caused the explosion, but Police Chief Matthew Itere says that they are looking into the explosion. You forgot that? We are bombed. From that time, even it was not possible for us to go to some of our church, churches and cashers. Eh? We are not able to go. So when you say you stand in a, that meeting and you say you're going to silence that. And when I remember the history of where we are coming from, when you were prime minister, those times we were bombed. My friend, I'm, I'm reading something bad here. I'm reading something bad here now. Yes, I'm reading something bad here. We were bombed. You remember 2010? Churches were bombed. Yeah? So that's why we're saying we need state protection. Churches need state protection. We need it. Very well, we need it. Yeah? You remember, all from Garissa, 2012, to Nairobi here, yeah? and other parts of Nairobi, to Mombasa, our churches were bombed. Hmm? Garissa, I remember, were bombed there. People died in that church. At exactly 10.15 a.m., two simultaneous grenade attacks occur in Garissa town in northeastern Kenya. A grenade is hurled at the African Inland Church. At least seven masked men are said to have attacked and killed the two police officers manning the entrance of the church before taking their guns. Then, aimlessly shooting at the confused faithful who are giving offerings at the time. A congregation scattered by the commotion, most of them met their deaths while trying to escape. At least 17 people, including three children, two policemen, four men and eight women, lost their lives and over 40 seriously injured, 10 in critical condition. This the aftermath of the aimless shooting. Hmm? In Nairobi, bombs were every all churches here. 
Sana tukambo kila mtu ande klasi na yanenda. Nga mwenye kapele kawasi na ngine. Brada nga kengiwa next week kende iko kumusha. Sana kukaka, tukaka about five minutes and tukaski kutu melipuka. The day's events will make dark memories for little one Jiku Mwangi. This is the day her brother sustained serious injuries following a grenade attack at St. Polycap ACK Church in Jujaroda Road Estate, Pangani. Inside the church's Sunday school class, tipped over chairs, blood-stained shirts, shoes, and a holy Bible lay below the Ten Commandments. Kenya has experienced a string of grenade attacks, but none like this. Never has an attack been directed at a group of innocent children. This is wrong. It, we, I don't think as a country we are going to accept this kind of a thing. Shocked residents of Pangani were eager to see the damage. <laughs> but they were blocked by police and clergymen. After a few minutes, the curious crowd turned angry. Nairobi, part of Kiambu, you remember Mombasa. A trail of destruction and death. The scene inside the church, evidence of how brutal and ruthless the attack was. In just a matter of seconds, at least three people were left dead. Dozens of others are nursing injuries in hospital. Police now say it was an act of terrorism. As the uh, worshippers were trying to pre prepare themselves for the service, uh, it is alleged that two men stormed the church and one of them started firing randomly at the worshippers. Witnesses say just as the Sunday service was about to start, two hooded gunmen stormed the church premises and started shooting indiscriminately at the congregation. Police say the high number of bullet cartridges recovered from the Joy in Christ Church indicated the gunmen were armed with automatic weapons. The attackers also tried to raid a second church nearby, but fled when armed police on patrol in the neighborhood appeared. Kofam Renje, CCTV. Six days after the brutal killing of 41-year-old Pastor Charles Mathole inside his redeemed gospel church in Mtopanga Estate in Kisauni, Mombasa, his congregation would gather at his home to lay to rest a man who was shot on the head from behind as he prayed inside the church. The incident coming a month after the Salvation Army Church in Majengo was burnt down just a day after the killing of Sheikh Ibrahim Ismail of the Masjid Musa Mosque, one that left the Christian leaders in Mombasa furious, although no link has been established between the two incidents. How many culprits have been brought to book? Makanisetu mengi di Ohio, hayana ulinzi, hayana ukuta, hayana geti, hayana chochote, jay. And they already have the answers to that question. These men of God are now proposing what they say are measures of last resort. Serikali itoe bunduki za AK-47 kwa kila kanisa. Kila kanisa itoe AK-47. Ili tuzuhia makanisa yetu ya sichomwe, mali yetu iziporwe, Police claim to have launched investigations into the killing with a guard at the church among those being held for questioning. Enough is enough! Churches were bombed. That season, that environment, eh? you people in power, you're in government, you're in power. Eh? And then you are starting to say churches don't need protection. Those days, those people can understand. Some of us could not even attend Kesha. We are afraid to go to Kesha's. Eh? It's unfortunate. So you can't say like that. You can't say like that. Churches need protection in the name of Jesus. So those people who bombed us, eh? we forgive them. We forgive them. We forgive them. But we can't stand as a leader and we say again, when you think they, they give you power, eh? they give you power. You're going to silence the church. And you know, in your time when you were the prime minister, our churches were bombed. Don't make us read something different here.
Don't make us read something different here. Eh? Because remember, if you read our history, our history, you said gonna sell the churches. Yes, you said about when you were prime minister, you have the Muslims put Kathi, Kathi in the constitution. It's okay. That is okay. You have to fight for their rights. But you help them, but you oppose us, the bishops. Our issue, like for example, the BBI, you oppose us. You support the Muslims on the Kathi issues. You, you oppose us. Us, people of God, BBI, you oppose us. And then you are standing to say in their congregation, you're going to silence churches. Uh -uh. We are reading something different here. Something different here. If you are able to support Muslims, you oppose us, and then you stand the Muslim congregation and say, gonna You're going to finish this thing. Uh, and in your tenure, bombs, bomb churches. You support the Muslims as you oppose us. Something is wrong. That is not a statement you could have said as, a, as you. No, that was wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. Very wrong. You know very well, like I remember the Church of Nen Evangelism. Nen Evangelism, that church was pulled down. Remember? The constitution was there. How, why could the constitution guard the pulling down of that church? It was pulled down. And that's what we are saying as a church, we need, we need, we need state protection as God's people. So I'll say, Dr. William Ruto was right, saying he's going to protect the church. He said it very well. He's going to protect the church. The church needs protection. It's not just enough to say the church is protected in the, in the concern. If the concern was still working so powerfully, why were our churches being bombed? Eh? And why had we, us in churches, hired the police to come and guard some of our churches? Those days was too much fear. We could not go to church to catch us. We could not go to catch us. We remain at home. So I can't imagine such a thing recurring, recurring again. No? These are not good statements. These are not good statements. Hmm? These are not good statements. And that's why I want to tell bishops and pastors, you need to know our history and where you are coming from. And some stands with the church, he's going to send the church and we know our history. That's very wrong. That is something to think about. And I'm talking as an apostle and I don't like this kind of games I'm seeing in the churches. People nowadays, they have lost God in our churches. They are defending what they are not supposed to defend. And they are attacking those whom they are supposed to support. It's just a shame in the church. And a big shame. A big shame among God's people. A big shame. Today, the Safarians are the ones who are saying the gospel is brought by the white man. Muslims are saying the gospel is brought by the white man. Raila says it's going to sign that. And bishops and pastors are supporting that. They forgot the gospel is the plan of God that God gave his missionaries around the world to preach it and raise it. And God himself, because of Jesus' death and sacrifice on the cross, God highly exalted Jesus and gave Jesus a name that passed all our names. And that's why the Christianity has been elevated above all other religions because of the death of Jesus. Because Jesus pleased God. And anything connected with Jesus, God elevated it. God have mercy on this generation of bishops and pastors who lost God, who lost the plan of God, who are just in churches, but they don't know why they're in churches, who preach every Sunday, but they don't understand why they are preaching. Oh, my God. Father, forgive them in the name of Jesus. Show them mercy, Lord. Show them direction. Show them your will, because most of them don't understand your will anymore. They lost your will. Father, show them your will in the name of Jesus. Expose every evil, Lord. Expose every heart. Expose them, Father. Expose them for me. For us as a church, listen, listen, listen. Christians are praying in this nation, all over the land, and God is now exposing hearts. Oh, yes. When you hear them stand and they say they're going to silence churches, God is exposing, God is showing us this is another type of people to stand with as God's people. Never in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.